Hello and welcome to another edition of How to Draft MTG. I don't know if I want to start the videos that way, but uh, that was kind of weird. Uh, my name's Al. Welcome. We're doing uh, Crimson Vow Draft here. Uh, I've done a handful of drafts now. I'm starting to form my opinions on the format. Um, if you open a sweet rare, of which there are many, I believe is correct to sort of try to build towards that as best we can. Uh, the rares are a whole lot more powerful uh, on average in this set than they were in Midnight Hunt. And the commons, on the other hand, are kind of flat in power level relative to each other. So whereas in Midnight Hunt you were heavily incentivized to draft uh, blue and black and uh, and white as well because the commons were so good. Uh, in this set, the colors are actually pretty balanced. So uh, if we open a good rare, we're going to draft towards that. If we open, uh, if we don't open a good rare, we're going to try to bias towards red, I think, uh, and black as two of the deeper colors uh, and white to some extent as well. As the deeper colors at common that have access to good removal, uh, and in order to beat rares, we need uh, a low curve and uh, good removal. So we open this pretty sweet one here, Hullbreaker Horror, five blue, blue, seven, eight, flash, can't be countered, so you get to eat something in combat. Whenever you cast a spell, you bounce something, uh, bounce a spell or permanent. So that seems really good. Uh, Markov Walter has been good. Red, white, aggro is a good deck. Uh, you can curve out, beat people down, but also if you have access to Traveling Minister and Heron of Hope, you can also outrace the other aggro decks. So I've liked Red White a fair bit. Forboding Statue has not been very good. It's been pretty slow. Admin Will, solid combat trick for the white aggro decks. Doom to Center, good sack fodder. Bleed Drives, premium removal, and would be the second uh, pick in this pack. And the rest of these cards are pretty medium. Snarling Wolf's been okay. Point of Discussion, okay. Toxic Scorpion, okay. So we're going to take Hullbreaker Horror. Uh, this doesn't mean that we're 100% blue, but it's certainly going to make us want to take more blue cards where possible. Speaking of blue cards, we have Lantern Bear, which is the top blue common. So it could be a pretty easy pickup for us here. We'll see what's going on at Uncommon. There's a, some premium Uncommons as well. Got uh, Fleeting Spirit here, which is decent. Uh, two mana, three one. Pretty hard to kill, pretty hard to interact with. Uh, it's not great if your opponent plays like a lantern bearer or a doom to center or something on their side or even like uh, the one mana one one red creature because you're not going to want to attack into it and discard a card uh, to save this or whatever and you're probably not going to have three cards in the graveyard so card's fine uh, two drops are a premium in this format like lantern bearer a fair bit here i like traveling minister a whole lot uh and i kind of feel like we should take I think it's between the Minister and the Lantern Bearer here. Uh, Grizzly Ritual as removal is pretty medium. Uh, I think I'd rather take a, a low-cost card. Definitely not Heron Blessed Geist. I guess we'll take Lantern Bearer. I feel like it's very, very close between these two. But because we do have the good blue rare, let's sort of stay blue um, and try to make it happen. Okay, Twin Blade Geist has been pretty obnoxious to play against. Great two-drop for white. Obviously works with blue because uh, blue and white want to play Disturbed. But this just works anywhere. Uh, it's a very annoying body as a 1-1 as a one -one double strike, and then putting double strike on something later can be quite a, quite a beating. So uh, I like this one a fair bit. I think I'm going to uh, pencil that in as our pick. What else we got? Gluttonous Guest is solid as a way to sort of make the game go longer, generate a little bit of value with blood. Um, for what it's worth, I have not liked decks that just sit back and try to block and try to grind. I think you do need to be playing meaningful spells every turn and, and sort of working towards beating your opponent. Uh, but a 1-4 body is pretty nice when we're trying to get to a big Hullbreaker Horror. Um, but I think we're going to take the Twin Blade Geist here as just a, a very powerful option and a nice uh, aggressive option for us as well. Um, also, like this Horror is going to be good if we just go, <laughs> you know, curve out, pressure our opponent, and then eventually, you know, get to 7 mana or whatever and play this. If this is like one of our only top end cards, we're going to be okay with that. Um... We do want kind of ways to get rid of it, though, if it's not going to be any good. So it might perform a little bit better in, like, a black or red blue deck where we actually get access to some blood tokens. Skulking Killer has been very bad. This dies to uh, Flame Blessed Bolt, which is the, one of the best commons in the set, and uh, doesn't really do anything at four mana. Honeymoon Hearse is a bit clunky and slow. Parish Blade Trainee is a little bit clunky at the two mana slot, but could be our pick here. Uh, so there's not much else going on. We've got Selhoff and Tumor for the value. That is a way to pitch the horror if it's not any good. Um, and I think that's kind of it. So, yeah, I'm going to take the, the, the trainee. I don't love it, but uh, I also don't 
hate this start of sort of aggro blue white. Um, so I think I think it makes sense to take it here. I'm going to take traveling minister here. I think stitch assistant is fine, but these types of exploit creatures. You want to have good things to sacrifice to them. Otherwise, they're not really that good on their own. If you're sacrificing a meaningful creature to Rotai Gargantua, there's a great chance that your opponent doesn't have to uh, sack a meaningful creature to it. So you really want to be sacking like a Doom to Center or a Lantern Bearer, which we do have one of, uh, to, um, you know, to really profit there. Um, or you know, a Bioloom Egg or something really excellent like that, or the Undead uh, Caretaker that gets a creature back. But I think we're just going to take Traveling Minister here. We've got a pretty decent uh, white start going, so I think we'll just keep going with that. Another blue card here, Stitched Assistant. Um, and that's kind of it. Blizzard and Guest is pretty good out of red. Um, I mean, we've got the Lantern Bear to stack to it. It's not going to be at its absolute best just yet. But I think we could grab it here. I guess our another option is Piercing Light, which hasn't looked all that good to me uh, as of yet. And yeah, I mean, I think the rest of these cards are just a little bit too clunky uh, with our start, at least, to really feel like they're they're gonna they're gonna kill. Uh, I do like Belligerent Guest though in a uh, white red aggro deck. So you know we can kind of sort of keep an eye on that as a potential lane for us if we start to see some more red cards. Uh, seeing lots of white here, uh, so we're going to take that as a signal that white is open to our right. We're going to take another Traveling Minister. This card has just been really, really excellent. Uh, it pushes damage, so you're pressuring your opponent, and if your opponent's pressuring you, then it gains life, which <laughs> negates that. So it's it's very, very good, uh, and it also helps lengthen the game out so that we can cast our Hullbreaker Horror. Uh, not much else to take note of in this pack, although there is a Wretched Throng here, so maybe if we see a, another one, we could semi-count on wheeling it, although I haven't really liked Wretched Throng. Uh, here's another one. I haven't really liked Wretched Throng as a card, even if you have a bunch of them, because 2-1 is just not very good, and paying 2 mana for the extra body isn't that good, whereas like something like Doom to Center gives you the body for free when it dies. Uh, another Stitch Assistant, Syncopate, and Wretched's Throng, I think, are the cards we're looking at here. Although there is a Blood Petal Celebrant in the pack, which is also quite nice. Um, I think we're going to take Syncopate here. If we can get on board and get attacking early enough, we can hold this up to sort of protect our, our board state. I think that's pretty good. I know I just said we should keep an eye out for Wretched Throngs, but I, I just haven't liked it enough to really make it a priority uh, just yet. You can let me know in the comments what you think of it. Uh, Fear of Death is not a card I care for. Pretty clunky, doesn't always answer the thing you want to answer, doesn't always give enough uh, negative power to really do anything. So we're going to take a, a a combat trick here. Pretty good with uh, Twin Blade Geist, and also pretty good when you put the Twin Blade Invocation on something um, to have access to a way to protect it from getting killed. Okay, Grizzly Ritual is a removal spell. Our deck uh, is probably going to need removal, and we don't have any yet. And then there's Heron Blessed Geist, which uh, is fine. Yeah, sure, I guess so. I, I mean, I don't think we're very interested in splashing. So I don't, and I don't feel like we've seen much black. So I don't think that Grizzly Ritual is a reason to, uh, to move off of a card that, you know, ostensibly fits our deck fairly well here. I will take Steelclad Spirit as a, a curve out piece. Not a great one, but uh, I think it'll do just fine. Wanderlight Spirit as a uh, kind of an aggressive three, and it looks like we're kind of kind of in the blue-white disturb synergy uh, pile here, kind of semi-synergy. Synergy is a, is a not a great way to describe this actually. It's it's a it's an it's an aggressive uh, skies deck with some disturb in it. There's not like a a lot of like hard line synergy in this format like there was in Midnight Hunt, which is like, jam all the creatures with Disturb together. Or not Disturb. Uh, well, yeah, Disturb. Or uh, Decayed. Or, you know, whatever. It's, it's pr pretty uh, pretty clear what you were supposed to do in that format. This format, the, the decks are a little bit lighter on that type of streamlined synergy and a little bit heavier on just like, let's put some cards together that work and try to uh, try to put some pressure and, and get there. So, we're Looks like we're a deck that likes to be in the air. Cruel Witness uh, does that pretty well. It's a four drop, of which we don't have any yet. 
Uh, Screaming Swarm does a similar thing here, but at six mana, it's just a little bit rich for our blood. I think we already have a seven drop that we're keen on playing, and we don't want to have too many cards that cost more than four. So I think this pick is between Cruel Witness and Militia Rallier and Syncopate. And uh, we're just going to take the solid flying creature there. All right. Uh, Sigardus Imprisonment is probably the card we want here. I kind of like Whispering Wizard. You need a lot of spells to really make it tick. We've got Lantern Bearer, Twin Blade Geist, uh, Sanctify we're not going to be playing. Uh, so not a ton to trigger it yet. Uh, Sigardus Imprisonment will also trigger it. Um, but yeah, just a little bit clunky. You can't double trigger it. Uh, and I think removal is at a premium in this format with, uh, you know, the, the big bomb rares that are floating around. So uh, I think we'll take the imprisonment here. This is not a pick I would normally make in like a typical format like Midnight Hunt would be uh, a format that's much more um, kind to cards like Wizard that want high synergy. I think this format's a little bit more to the, the side of like just take removal spells. Um, all right. Investigator's Journal is just kind of a clunky, slow card draw spell that can kind of get you there if you've if you've gotten to the point where it's late in the game. Um, I think out of this pack, I just like taking another copy of Syncopate. Again, looks like we're going to be kind of a tempo deck if things go our way. We do need some more um, early game stuff, but um, I mean, it's only pack two, pick three. So the plan for this deck is to draft more twos and uh, creatures that fly and just sort of pressure our opponent and counter their stuff uh, a little bit later in the game so that's kind of where i feel we're at with this particular deck we don't really need any more five sixes sevens we're good for those we're just gonna be looking for twos threes maybe a, another four uh and then as i say that we opened diver scout which is a good uh five but we also opened katilda which is pretty darn good as a three i think flying lifelink uh, power tough is equal to the number of spirits and enchantments you control, and then disturbs to give something flying lifelink. Protection from vampires is actually kind of meaningful. There's a lot of those in this set. Uh, and then, obviously, uh, pumps it up for spirits and enchantments. So, yeah, I mean, I think we're going to take it. Diver Scab is good. We don't have a ton of great sack fodder, but this is a card where you're willing to sacrifice a meaningful... Uh, creature to get its effect, but I think we'll just take the cheaper card that is very hard to race and has flying, and I like it. All right, winged portent. Uh, eh. Strictly cards that strictly draw cards and don't affect the board or gain you life or do anything are usually not something that we prioritize in limited. We do have a fair amount of flying. One, uh, I guess we don't yet, but we want to. Two. Three, four, yeah, five. So, I mean, I, 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 we could take this, uh, but there's a good chance that this like doesn't even draw two cards for us, uh, and we're not splashing green, so we're not going to get the full effect of it. So I think this is an easy traveling minister as a card we can play early. Um, and yeah, here, pretty easy. Distracting Geist. So we're still kind of looking for some more removal. Um, the instant speed white kill an attacker is a card we're interested in. Sigurd's Imprisonment. Uh, the blue tap uh, tap and freeze a creature and draw a card is something we're interested in. So something that um, I think was a little bit lost, I mean, like early on in the format, is just sort of the, the nuts and bolts basics of having a low curve in Limited. There's just so many more hands that we're going to be able to keep, knock on wood, that we don't just get absolutely owned by the... Uh, by RNG this this game but like when you have all these one drops that are actually very impactful in the game and two drops that are impactful in the game the amount the, the the amount of hands that you can just keep straight up where you're like ah oh, this is this isn't sketchy you know uh we don't have to think about mulling, mulliganing this is is so huge and the amount of equity you get from just crushing opponents who stumble on mana or don't have a two drop to play uh there's there's just so much there that I think can get overlooked. So if you're having trouble in this format, I would highly recommend trying to draft more cheaper cards and fewer expensive cards uh, and try to have the plan of attacking your opponent because there's just a lot of sort of almost quote-unquote invisible sort of win percentage you get there because you don't always remember those games where like your opponent just didn't play a two 
uh, and you did, and you won because of that. There's a lot of games where like neither of you play a two, and it just turns into a weird board stall, and uh, you know the game gets weird, and you you just lose as a result or something. I think we take the three drop over the uh, sink bait. Hopefully, what I'm saying makes sense here. Um, we'll take repository scab. I don't believe we're gonna play it. So wow, this came all the way around. So I mean, you can just take this for the gems or whatever. I think we take the sell off in tumor though, as a a way to cycle this Hallbreaker Horror if we can't cast it and uh, potentially get some value off of our Disturbed Creatures. I don't think this is, like, a, a great card, but we do need stuff to do at two mana, so we could try it out. Probably don't want to play two, but might play uh, play one. Okay. A lot of good options for us here. Angelic Quartermaster is a, uh, a five drop that's really worth putting in our deck. Um and then there's also Heron of Hope, which is excellent at four mana. This card plus Traveling Minister is so hard to beat for decks that are trying to attack you or us. Uh, and then there's Drog Skull Infantry, I think in third place. Uh, so it's 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 between Heron and Quartermaster, although we do want more twos because our twos aren't great at the moment. Um, yeah, I think we're going to take the Quartermaster here. Really close. Really, really close. Especially with four Traveling Ministers. Heron of Hope is going to be really good. Uh, so hopefully we get another look at one of those. But I think the Quartermaster is just enough stats that it's uh, it sort of edges uh, the other cards out. Okay, Resistance Squad. How many humans? Six. And four of them were playing at one mana. One of them were playing at two mana. So pretty good chance of this just cycling for a card, which is real nice. Uh, there's also Ceremonial Knife, which is fairly interesting in a deck that's trying to attack in the air because you should be able to connect with it a fair bit, and generating a bunch of blood tokens is real good. So I think it's between those two. I imagine we're not going to play the Skywarp Scob. It's just a bit clunky and slow, and we're going to have disturb stuff in the graveyard that we don't want to... Exile. Evolving Wilds also notable in, in our deck here. We've got double white commitments and double blue commitments, so having the um, uh, the fixing there is pretty important. Okay. Arm the Cathars, probably not. Uh, I mean, I can obviously see situations where that card's going to win, but uh, not not all that often. I think we just take Sigarda's Imprisonment here. Uh, I feel like the fact that this generates a blood token later in the game is also a little bit under uh, underappreciated. And we very much need removal. So we're going to take it. I do like Kindly Ancestor as well. Uh, Parish Blade Trainee. If it comes back, we might grab it. It's pretty decent with like something like Wanderlight Spirit. Probably cutting Stitch Assistant at this point. I think we're cutting a Selhoff and Tumor. Hopefully we'll cut both of those. Because they're not, they're not great. But as I said, I think that they will have some synergy for us. Again, we'll just snap up a Brian Comer. That's a real nice one to see. Uh, passing... Traveling Minister number five, that's okay, though. Uh, I imagine there's... Okay, they've seen a lot of knives, so maybe a knife will come back. We'll grab that as well. A little bit um, glutted at three mana here. But, I mean, it's better better that than five mana or, or four mana. But we would take, like, another four drop. We'd really like a Heron, as we've said in this deck. Uh, so please show us a Heron in the next couple picks. Okay, here's another look at Knife. And not really anything else in the pack. Wash away. We've already got double syncopate, which is better. Nurturing presence is okay. Uh, the problem is, is like we're going to be putting it on a traveling minister more often than not, and this is not really a card that wants to get into combat. Um, so I think we take the knife, but I do respect this card as as having a place in a deck like this. Uh, Twenty creatures, though we're not desperate. Uh, all that desperate for uh, for creatures. Um, but we are desperate for two drop creatures, and uh, I think the bystander is the way to go here. Another minister in the pack, uh, also a griff rider, but uh, threes we don't need. Um, pretty Going to be pretty easy to trigger this, I think. And once this transforms, it's really annoying for your opponent. Three five is huge, and then having death touch is just like cool. So they have to like triple block it, and they just lose all their guys. <laughs> it's pretty brutal for them, so... Uh, happy to see that one there. And here I think it's Trainee over Griff Rider. Just because we want more two drops. Uh, and we do have some stuff that can that can train it. But uh, I could see that going the other way as well. 
Uh, also, having four ministers means it should be fairly easy to train these, uh, which I like the sounds of. Uh, here we can take Wedding Invitation. Probably not a card we're going to play, but... Ooh, baby. All right. Well, we asked for it, and we got it back. Infantry also pretty good, so I guess nobody's white at the table. Um, I didn't too, talk too much about reading signals, um, but I, I did mention uh, in pack, I think, pack one, pick seven, or pick eight, that we were seeing a lot of white. So... Uh, what that means is that we're going to expect to see white in pack three uh, because the packs flow in the same direction as pa in pack one and pack three. In pack two, they flow the opposite direction. They're going to go to the left. Uh, or, sorry, come from the left, go to the right. Uh, another ceremonial knife, eh? So, geez. Okay, well, so this is maybe a rare instance where nobody's on uh, nobody's on white. Uh, yeah, I like Kindly Ancestor, I think, here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. It's close. The trainee may have been the correct pick. Um, but we have we can sort of let ourselves off the hook in the two-drop category because we do have a lot of ones as well. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're taking white cards in pack one as we sort of start to see them flow. We're saying, okay, we're going to expect to see these again in pack three. And we did. Blue was, like, not crazy open, but... Um, we got a we got a uh, a nice rare and uh, enough sort of stuff going on with blue that we were able to like capitalize on a Brian Comer getting opened and um, you know still play this horror. So cards that we wish we had, I think maybe a copy of Evolving Wilds, although we do have a lot of one drops, which that's in conflict with. Um, maybe another copy of uh, you know a two drop like a Drog Skull Infantry. I know we passed it, but Heron's going to be really really bonkers in this deck with four ministers um so that's sort of those are the cards that this deck needs um to be a little bit better but uh i think it's pretty darn good i don't know i'm happy with uh, anytime your curve looks like this like a lot of low drops that are good and few high drops that i think that's that bodes well it bodes well so in terms of cuts, we've got 24 creatures so we're certainly cutting some amount of creatures our spells are fairly uh, in line with what our deck's trying to do. Imprisonment as, as our removal. I think one combat trick is fine to have. A couple counter spells to protect our, our board presence as we develop it. And the knife is like, maybe we'll play it, maybe we won't. But I think it's pretty good to generate some value later and make sure that we're not um, flooding out, which is a concern in this type of format. So I think we'll start by looking at which creatures we can afford to cut. I think Steelclad Spirit can probably go. We've got a lot of cards to cut, though. Um, just because it doesn't attack very well. Uh, Selhoff and Tumor we may not need. We have not all that much in the way of Disturb stuff to discard, I guess. Uh, we've got a few. So there is some synergy there. And it does block, and it does come down on turn two. So this is a maybe. Uh, I think all these two drops are for sure in. These one drops are for sure in. So looking at our threes, our threes are all pretty reasonable. I think Stitched Assistant can probably go because it just doesn't quite fit the plan of being a creature with flying that can beat down. Uh, Wanderlight Spirit is also on the edge. Uh, Militia Rallyer is on the edge. Uh, Wanderlei Spirit is good, but the fact that it, it can't block creatures on the ground is kind of a, a drawback, obviously. Militia Rallyer does block pretty well. Uh, as an attacker, it's going to help train the trainees, which is cool. It's it's a good rate, but I think we just have better options at three. Um, so I think we can maybe cut that one. Cut the Spirit. That's five cr uh, creatures down. Uh, I think we want to keep both our fours. Maybe we cut Heron Blessed Geist. Five mana, three, three flyer that makes two one ones later. I mean, the card is good, but we also have Angelic Quartermaster, which is good. Don't think we're cutting the Hallbreaker. Could be correct to just not play this, actually, because uh, our deck is low to the ground enough that, like, this is just going to be sitting on our hand a bunch, and uh, it might actually just never come down. Um, but in the games where we do stall out and we actually have something big to play, I think that's going to be pretty darn cool. Uh, and also, like, occasionally we'll be able to cycle it away for a, uh, uh, if we need to. Uh, although these bloods don't come down very early, so could be kind of troublesome. So we're, we're 24 creatures, we're cutting 6, that's 18 creatures. Uh, so it's, I, th I 
think I like this creature curve, and it's either going to be... Um, it's either going to be... Yeah, it's either going to be the Hullbreaker Horror or, I guess, like, Adamant Will. Don't think we're cutting a land. Don't really want to cut the knife. I think Adamant Will is good enough with, you know, we're trying to hook up things like Katilda and Brian Comer on things. Uh, I think Adamant Will is going to be good enough. So, yeah, pretty tough decision here. We could cut another creature, like, um, I guess, Resistance Squad. Um, so if we do make these cuts, we're 41... And we still have a lot of humans. So I think Resistance Squad stays. Yeah. Is it the knife then? Maybe it's one syncopate? Don't really want to draw two of these. Yeah, maybe it's just one syncopate. That makes sense to me. It's either that or the horror. Uh, and in terms of our lands, we're pretty heavy white. So we definitely want to bias towards white. Um, the, that makes this double blue kind of awkward. Because we actually don't... We actually would like to play ten planes in a deck like this which means maybe the cruel witness needs to go so we're going to play 10 planes and 7 islands given how much white we have so maybe the cruel witness needs to go maybe needs to go maybe we just play heron instead or militia rallyer instead um, and the reason I'm saying this is because the fewer islands we play the less likely we are to have double blue on, on turn 4 um so I think given that we're cutting kind of a top-ish end flyer, we'll replace it with another top-ish end flyer. But I could see Rallyer being correct here as well as just a way to push more damage. Um, but flying is also really good. So we're going to try it like this, and we will see you for game one. Uh, welcome to game one. This is why we cut islands for planes, because we're going to have hands like this, and we need white sources. Uh, this is a mulligan. We can't cast Hallbreaker Horror, and we can't cast any of our... I mean... Not for several, you know, many, many turns. We don't want to have this in our opening hand. And we can't cast any of our spells. So we're going to mulligan. And yeah, this hand works. Uh, we can put the Hullbreaker Horror back. Already feeling like maybe we just need to cut it. <laughs> but I have faith that it will be sweet if we draw it late. Uh, looks like our opponent... Uh, what did they do? Did they keep seven? How do I see that? Yeah, they did. Okay, cool. All right, so we're going to need to find some lands. But at least we have a one into a two. And hopefully we can... Yeah, nice. Pick up a, a blue source there. That's good. All right, so are we worried about them flashing anything in? I don't think so. So we're going to get in for one. Usually better to get in for damage uh, early on in a deck like this than it is to gain life when the, the, you know, the lane is clearly open. And we'll see what our opponent's got for us here on turn three. The opponent brings kindly ancestor to the party. It's pretty nice. Uh, so we can imprison that, which is pretty cool because it uh, doesn't get to come back as a uh, enchantment that way. Um, and that's pretty much the only play we have access to. I mean, we could pump this. Uh, we are going to pump this and attack, but uh, we don't really want to trade it because it's it's going to get better later. We could play Lantern Bearer and just pass, but that's pretty poor use of our mana. It doesn't get any damage in. And then this thing just attacks us, uh, starts attacking us and gaining them life. So pretty clear imprisonment here. Pump up the Bystander and slam. So yeah, the fact that this is like pushing damage, enabling attacks, and gaining life is, is just very, very powerful. Okay, opponent with the Heron. So another life gain uh, situation for them. We'll just... Pacify it, I think, rather than playing this uh, Geist. Is that correct to do? I mean, we could... Um, we could get in with the Panicked Bystander as a 3-2, see if they want to trade. And... Then play Distracting Geist, which disables blockers for them. But I feel like this card is just a big enough problem that we just want to nerf it right now um, continue to apply pressure I think that's the way I think that's the best move okay opponent plays wanderlight spirit which is not a problem for us because we have uh, creatures on the ground uh, we can play resistance squad to draw a card because we've got 
a couple of humans here. Pretty clear by their artwork, but it's nice to check. So still not hitting lands, which is kind of annoying, but really not the end of the world. We're going to get in 4-3 here. <clears throat> and our opponent needs to find a way to block creatures on the ground. In for two. I mean, they got five mana, so they should be able to deploy something sweet. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. We hit lands. Lands are good. Uh, how interested are we in trading with Distracting Geist? Well, I guess if we play Heron, attack with Resistance Squad, if they trade, we gain two, uh, and then we gain two more uh, off of uh, the Heron and the Minister which flips the bystander, which is, I think, worthwhile for us. This is five mana to come back, and they're behind on board, so they're not really going to want to utilize that yet. Um, so I guess we'll play the Heron first. Uh, if it gets syncopated, then um, we might have to rethink our, our life a little bit here. Okay, it's going to land. And we're going to pump the resistance squad. And... Boogie on in there. Opponent's going to think about trading. They might have a combat trick. If they do, we still get to flip, which is good. All right. So we're getting two off of the panicked bystander. And we're going to flip. All right. Not bad. So not sure what our opponent's holding on to. Could have just been the uh, activation on Heron of Hope that uh, was causing their, their game to pause. Let's see what they want to do here. 2-1 flyer. And passing the turn back. Okay. So, at this point, we just, we're just going to use Syncopate to protect uh, what we've got going on. So we'll pump up the Heron and Swing. And this combination of creatures just makes it super hard for them to race. The only way they're getting out of this is by playing uh, some kind of nasty big bomb creature. Oh, wait. Um... They can block. Uh, they can block with Wanderlight Spirit. I forgot about that. Uh, so we don't actually want to attack with the Heron. So I should have pump, pumped the Culprit. My mistake there. We'll just get in with the Culprit. <clears throat> Opponent's got something here. Maybe a Bounce Spell. A Fierce Retribution. Nice. Okay, so... Uh, do we want to counter that? That leaves us shields down to them um, having a crazy rare. But uh, if we do counter this, then they're going to seven. We're playing Distracting Geist. And they're going to be kind of in trouble next turn. Either way. So I think it's okay to counter it here. Plus they're not at, six, they're not at seven mana yet, which is where some of the crazier stuff... Uh, happens. And we'll play, uh, well, we'll get in for our three damage, I guess. Yeah. So, missed a damage. They should be at six. Oh, I tapped totally wrong. Didn't get to play my distracting guys. Okay, well, that's really dumb. Apologies for that. That could be pretty costly. Problem with talking and playing is that you make uh, mistakes. Let's see what our opponent's got here. Okay, opponent plays Kindly Ancestor. That's cool. It's annoying, but it's cool. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, if we had Distracting Geist, we'd be in a better spot. Um, take our turn. Trainee in the house. So, now we'll just pump the culprit. They're going to get to double block. No, they have to triple block to get it, and they can't do that. So, uh, yeah, so culprit attacking is good. Apologies for that misclick. I knew I was doing something weird, but I just didn't, uh, didn't actually react to it. So I'm assuming they don't have anything because they've just been sort of hanging on this Heron activation a bunch. Uh, but, okay, opponent goes to three. 
and ancestor is going to put them to five. Uh, but yeah, I think we just double spell the Geist and the Trainee. It's going to mess up their blocks. I guess if they do have something like Syncopate, it's also better to play it in the order we just did because th the Geist is more valuable to us than the Trainee. Okay, let's see what they've got for us here. Okay, Evolving Wilds for the opponent comes down. And opponent's going to uh, cast a Distracting Geist from hand. They also have one in the graveyard. Okay, so this is kind of a complex board. Uh, they can't block, yes they can, they can block Heron. Uh, unless we tap, if we attack with Distracting Geist and tap the Wanderlei Spirit, then they can't, but then they could block with uh, Ancestor. <clears throat> so we don't have a clear uh, kill on them this turn. Get in with the. I think we do get in with the Geist and tap the Ancestor. Get in with the Trainee. It's going to get bigger. Um, do we get in with the Heron? They can double block the Heron. But then they probably just die to something else, right? Yeah, they would just be dead if they did that. So, cool. So let's pump up the. Heron, I think. And we're gonna swing all tap ancestor. And I think their blocks get pretty pretty weird here. Trainee's gonna get bigger. And let's see what they've got here. So I think Spirit's gotta jump in front of Heron. But they cannot double up uh, Griff Rider. So yeah, Distractions are going to chump. Griff Rider going to trade. And they're going to go to one. Um, yeah, I think that makes sense. Maybe we were supposed to pump something else. I think they would have been able to get out, out of it either way. Okay, so we'll give Heron lifelink because we have mana to burn. Gain some life here. Opponent going to crack their wilds. So this last card could be... <laughs> something crazy but they're at a very low life total so hopefully they won't uh, be able to stabilize they're going to give their heron lifelink alright sure so that they can just pass I know that frustration of like I just want to pass through this turn and no one's going to let me because my heron can activate okay uh, so are, how worried are we about like a wrath effect I would, I would say somewhat uh, opponent's just gonna scoop it up. Okay, I'm starting to think about the uh, each player sacrifices X creatures spell, uh, and it may may have been correct to not play both of our creatures there, but uh, we won the game, so huzzah! Uh, I'll see you for the next. All right, we go first game two. Horror looking looking awkward in our opening hand, but uh, we do have kind of a, a little curve going here, so I think it's a keep. But we would definitely prefer this to be a three drop. Um, so. Getting close to wanting to just cut this, but we'll see if it... Uh, how about this? If it does something cool this game, we'll keep it. Otherwise, I don't think it fits. But it is very good, obviously, when it's in play. All right. Evolving Wilds for our opponent. Pass turn back to us. We draw a land, which is good. Play the Parish Blade Trainee here. Not the best as a two drop, but opponent gonna crack there, evolving wilds, and fetch up a forest. All right, their turn two. Do they have a two drop? They sure do. It's a snarling wolf. We can attack through that. Ooh, a double one drop there. Ooh, we drew a three though, right on time. That's pretty good. Okay, so if they want to equip ceremonial knife, we have blocks. Um, so yeah, I think we just get in for one here. Ancestor and say go. So as we can see, the play pattern with Syncopate tends to be 
that you don't really want to cast it, you would rather be playing things to the board early, right? You don't really want to cast this until later in the game. And later in the game, we need to be ahead, otherwise this is bad. So, um, just something to keep in mind with Syncopate. If we don't have a lot of stuff like this, we're going to get ourselves into a little bit of trouble. All right, Paxong Puff is real annoying. Uh, we can attack with both of our creatures. Trainee gets bigger. They can double block Kindly Ancestor. And we get to get rid of the pup, which is, I think, worthwhile uh, to us. If we play Heron first, we gain an extra life. I'm slightly concerned that they have the undying whatever thing that brings it back to life. And I think we want to hold up Syncopate for that reason. Otherwise... I think, we're, I think we're good to go. So we're, we're giving up one life by playing it this way. And there's, a, there's you know, there's a fairly low chance that that's, that is what they have. Okay, they're just taking the damage. That's pretty good. Um, taking damage is good. Okay, well, let's play Heron. If they can connect for a blood token this turn. <clears throat> also possible we should have played Trainee and hold up Syncopate, but... Getting Heron to play is, is just makes it so difficult for them to uh, to race us. Like their plan now is like, you, sure you swing with the pup if you want, but like we're coming back, we're gonna, we're gonna gain it all back, uh, and we have flying the flying advantage too. So what they really need to do this turn is I think remove Heron of Hope. We'll see if they can. Okay, moving to attacks. Pup gets bigger. Snarling Wolf coming in, but not pup. They want to have blocks on Ancestor. Um, so we're going to take one, because obviously they can pump it and kill our Heron uh, at the cost of two mana. No cards, which is not good for us. Ragged Recluse in the house. So I think we just come in with the... Oh, the train's not getting any bigger this turn. Um, so that's kind of weird. We don't have attacks with Ancestor. So I think we just play Trainee, hold up Syncopate, not giving Heron lifelink. Couple mana away from the Hullbreaker Horror. And what was that pause for? I guess Snarling Wolf activation. So yeah, we'll just get him for two. And we've still got decent blocks on the pup. It's going to become a 4-4. Four -four. Opponent's got removal for something. Parasitic grasp, maybe. They want to use it on the heron and they can't uh they can't cast it because it's a one man more. Oh boy, a third color. Okay. Well that changes a whole lot of things. Let's see what they've got for us. Okay, going to combat. Pup gets bigger. Pass to attacks. Pup gonna come in. We've got double blocks and counterspell backup. So I think we're safe to to double block here. If they've got a massive might. Ah, actually, if they have massive might, we can't syncopate it. Okay, they're not going to attack, and they're not going to equip knife. They're not going to cast any spells this turn. All right. Well, that's that's okay by us. Distracting Geist in the house. Let's try to get in with the Heron. Aaron does connect. Uh, so we're slightly shields down. If they have Parasitic Grasp, we can't counter it. If they've got Bleed, or, uh, if got bleed Dry or Parasitic Grasp, we can't counter it if we cast this Geist. Um, just trying to think of, like, would they have fired one of those off by now if they could? Like, if they have a braid, if they have a braid, we could still counter it. We do X equals four. So maybe it's correct to not play the Geist here. If we stick the Geist and they don't kill the Heron, we then, that does open us up to some amount of attacks because we can tap the pup down. Hmm...
tough decision. I think I'm gonna err on the side of casting our spells, but um, I think this is a kind of a big, big decision here. We really don't want our heron to die. Uh, are they gonna kill it? Okay, so opponent does have parasitic grasp. We can't counter it. So unfortunately, our heron is dead. Um, fortunately, we're gonna have attacks next turn. Equip knife. To pup. Pup gets big. Pup comes in. And I mean, so if we let pup through. If we let Pup through, they get to transform the Recluse and still have Snarling Wolf Pump available, which is pretty annoying. Um, we could chump with the trainee and grow the Ancestor by one, which is kind of fun. Maybe that's what we want to do. That lets us attack them back. We just lose a creature for no value, though, which I don't like. Um, so I think we take it. We got life points to spare. Pup sure is annoying, though. Okay, in for six. Create a blood. Play a land. Sack a blood. Roll recruit. I guess we counter that one. It's two bodies to block our things. So as you can see, as we start to fall behind, syncope gets less good. <laughs> uh, okay, so I think we want to jam jam all here, or maybe just maybe not the geist since they, their blocks are pretty bad as it is. We're getting we're getting a two for one, whatever they block. So yeah, I think I think we don't give them that trade. And then hopefully next turn we can draw land. And horror, you're either you're, this is your chance to stay in the deck. Okay, we have to draw we have to draw a land next turn, and then you have to like eat the pup or something. Um, that's what you gotta do, okay? All right. Pup, jam. Um, opponent's at eight. Could chump here. I think we take it. They're gonna flip their recluse. This is such a close game. Child of Pack, oh boy. That's real good. Hey, my man. Okay. So if we Geist tap the child, it's interesting they did not because they want they uh, they want um they want the snarling wolf to be able to pump, right? So yeah, so we don't really have attacks here. <laughs> Holebreaker at this point is trading with the pup, by the way. And they're gaining a pile of life. Ah, uh, boy, this this is not good. I guess we can bounce the pup if we draw a spell next turn, or if we just chump with distracting guys, then we'll actually have a spell to cast. So I think we have to sit back, we'll play our land, and pass the turn. Bouncing the pup will be be good for us. So this uh, worth noting that recluse only triggers on. Uh, oh yeah, this. Whoops. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's good. It can't make two twos, but it's big. All right, pack uh, song pup gets bigger, so we gotta like try to eat this pack man. I think if it comes in, we're gonna chump. Oh, this uh, deals a. Uh, and on damage, it creates a blood, so it actually doesn't matter if you block it. That's pretty sweet. I did not uh, think about that. Okay, opponent can cycle away a millipede. Okay. Ooh, this game's getting weird. Don't like it. Uh, 
Recluse transforms. Okay. Well, we're doing this thing. And this triggers multiple times. Okay, so we can bounce the pup. Uh, and we could bounce the pack mate. And that would leave them with two three threes or two three power creatures and a snarling wolf. We could jam with the horror. They could triple block and pump. And that would be bad for us. Uh, we do want to get these trainees more powerful though. So that might be enough to uh, make it make it okay. Okay, so I think we put the distraction on the trainee. Turn right non-line permanent. Get out of here. And we'll bounce the pack mate as well, I think. Since it's pumping everything. Makes sense. Get out of here. And then I think we do bash with everything. If they triple block, we get to take down all three of those creatures, deal them lethal, so they actually can't do that. And we get to chat and we get to tap something. Oh yeah, they don't even get to uh triple block us here. Okay. Um, so what do we want to tap? Spore crawler, I guess. They can't draw cards. Double training. Opponent scoops. Okay. Hallbreaker Horror, you're in. You're in. Game three, we go first. Good looking hand here. One, two, into maybe a removal spell, or maybe we draw a three drop to play. So I dig it. Panicked bystander. Yes, it's a good one. Real good one. Okay, I'll get in for one. For all the reasons discussed before. Panicked bystander. And don't really want to use Sigarda's imprisonment here. Would probably rather use an adamant will. Even that I don't love, but I think we want to continue to pressure our opponent. So trading our two two mana card for their two mana cards, okay. And we'd rather save the uh, imprisonment for um, a bigger threat that doesn't die as easily. And, I mean, this is also the situation where you got to have a little bit of faith in the top of your deck. We know we put a lot of creatures in there, um, even though we're kind of flooding out a little bit. Keep pressuring them. Trust our deck to deliver us the cards that we put in it and not just lands for the rest of the game. Uh, and that allows us to win because if we start to sort of sit back because we're like, oh, we're flooding, don't want to spend this the, the combat trick on a two drop, and we draw a lance for the rest of the game, we're going to lose. If we, uh, but if we start drawing creatures, uh, we're, we may have wished that we uh, did pressure our opponent more. Whereas if you know if we'd make the play, we just made draw a lance for the rest of the game, we we, we also lose. So uh, don't be afraid of drawing lands for the rest of the game. It will make you lose, but it shouldn't change your uh, plan um, because you gotta trust your deck a little bit. Either way, if we draw lands for the rest of the game, we're gonna lose. We gotta make the plays that let us win if we don't draw lands for the rest of the game. Traveling Minister trying to come down here. See what our opponent's got. Got something at three mana. Not sure what it is. Okay, opponent with the hero's downfall, pretty nice. So our uh, our bystander is dead, and they've got a big thing. That's really good. Draw a card, lose a life, or just transform probably. So I mean, we've got the removal for it. Yeah, but probably better to draw there because um, they flip. Um, next turn, so we kind of have to wait 
because otherwise, if we cigar is imprisonment, then they they just go, <laughs> they just choose to sacrifice, and then we actually lose one of our creatures. <laughs> so that kind of sucks. Um, so we'll wait it out, I guess. Um, that's gonna be hard to beat. Gonna be hard to beat, but I mean, hey, you know, the more lands we draw, the better uh, chance we have of casting uh, the Hallbreaker Horror if we should draw it. Okay, imagine opponent goes for the transform here. And they're going to get us for three, so we're set back fairly heavily by this. D Geist, not bad, not bad. So, uh, are we going to attack with a minister for two? I don't think that's worth it, because they just take the damage and attack us back. Although we do have a, a Geist to block... Desperate Farmer is a good card. All right, well, we're definitely doing this. Hmm. We are attacking this with Farmer either way. So the question is, do we want to trade a Minister for a Farmer? I feel like the answer to that question is maybe yes. I really don't like how these things flip flop when you're doing these activated abilities. It's uh makes it really stressful to know which one we're targeting. Uh all right. And D Geist. I think we would trade D Geist for this as well. Putting it on a minister is not very good, but And next turn we if we draw another land, we must remember that we can exile enchanted creature, create a blood and cycle. That's the first time that's come up for us this draft. Opponent going to jam. Uh, I will say that when they paused against us, I think it was like turn three we attacked and they had three mana, nothing to do. That probably, prob not probably, but potentially means they have adamant will in hand. Combat trick, they could target our creatures with it. They don't want to, obviously. Uh, so if they do have that, then we're losing our distracting guys to that, um, which is kind of okay because we want... Uh, combat tricks to kill small creatures, not big ones. And we're not really attacking them. This trade is good for us, so I think we go for it here. But I would not be surprised if they go adamant will. And, uh, I mean, they're going to gain a bunch of life. It's not great. The game's going to go... Okay, same deal. Yeah, sure. Game's going to go longer. Uh, oh, this thing does something, eh? Okay, cool. Pumps up the team. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, so we should exile that. We drew another minister, which is not bad for us. So we won't need to um, uh, use our blood this turn, but definitely good to just get rid of that since they, they can also like potentially sacrifice it to an exploit creature and get it back with uh, blood fountain or something. I think we just keep doing what we're doing here. Even though they get to attack us back. They would they would anyways. Try to keep their life total somewhat under control. They're going to uh, attack us back. So kind of just a wash here. Land. And yeah. Okay. Well. Uh, I don't think we can win from here. Um, so unfortunately we did flood as I said. And, and opponent had a couple of nice ones. Um, that is the way it goes. Begin of your end step, sack a non-demon creature and create a copy of this. Remember when these were like sacrifice a creature or this like deal six to you and it taps? Remember those days? No. Now it's just sack a creature and it's all pure upside. Um, can't really race this. I guess the out we have is to draw horror and bounce the tokens that it makes and then maybe draw imprisonment or something uh, yeah I don't know not looking good for us so I think we'll cycle the trainee because it does not actively help us do anything like if we draw a cigar as imprisonment we can blank the demon and then maybe like um, draw hallbreaker horn bounce the other one I don't know well we'll gain some life I think this game's gonna be over pretty soon. Uh, Distracting Geist. I don't think it makes sense to play it since we're not trying to race them, 
and this could trigger a spell. Uh, this could trigger the horror. Okay, board and window, pretty good. All right. So now we need to find Hallbreaker Horror like this turn, um, and then maybe next turn we can like not die. But okay, there it is. It can't block because it doesn't have flying. So we're just going to gain as much life as possible since the stupid window shrinks all our stuff anyways. Uh, won't show them that we've got the horror. We'll wait. They don't have counter spells in black-white. Okay, we're going to... Three. So I think, the, I think we have to draw... They have to not have a creature here and we have to draw Sigarda's Imprisonment. So we can bounce a demon. We bounce the demon token and imprison the main demon. That's got to be the correct move. I don't think it actually... Yeah, it, it would be bounce the token. So they're identical uh, copies of each other. Okay, we did not hit. <laughs> pretty, pretty unlikely. Uh, so we can bounce a thing. Gain three life. And uh, that's gonna that's gonna do it for this one. So, cool, sweet uh, sweet rare for our, our opponent there. Um, this format's really gonna test my ability and everybody's ability to like lose horribly to something like that and not get tilted because that's gonna happen a fair bit in this format. We'll see you for the next game. We're back. Opponent goes first. We've got a one into our choice of twos into a very good three. So. Uh, I think we're going to keep this one. No blue yet, but uh, no need for blue at the moment. So that works out okay. Opponent keeps seven, and they're going to start with a forest, and that's it. Hopefully we'll see a land or two over the next couple of turns to make us feel warm and fuzzy. But uh, even if we don't, we've got uh, some ways to stay in the game. And... Pretty clear panicked bystander here, I think. And we'll gain ourselves a life. Pass it back. So really hoping to see a land, obviously. Next turn, just get Katilda into play. It'll only be a 1-1, one -one, but... Um, it's still good. as a 1-1 one -one flying lifelink. Uh, and we can threaten to trade... Can, does this stop activate abilities? No. No, we saw that in the previous game. Uh, we can threaten to trade bystander for Weaver... And we're fairly close. Like, next turn, we can swing for two lifelink plus this and flip. So I don't think we want the trade. Uh, there's a good chance they don't block because they're going to want to use this mana, though. Uh, it's kind of like a catch-22 because if they do block, then they never need the mana anyways. And we're going to feel kind of rough for that. But if they don't block, then it's best of both worlds because um, we get in for free damage. Um, and we still, you know, keep our bystander, uh, although they do get to keep their blossom to, uh, to attack with. Um, I think I'm going to go for it. I think there's a pretty good chance they don't block here. Yeah, even before they just snap it off now. Okay, cool. So that worked out. Um, so Katilda is in play. And we can flip bystander next turn, assuming our opponent doesn't play uh, something with reach, like a apprentice sharpshooter. Uh, even if they did, we could um, imprison it if we f really feel like we need to do that. Um, we'll see what they want to do here. All right, they do play a sharpshooter after all. Uh, we're going to take five. <coughs> Excuse me. Pardon me. Uh, and we hit a land drop. So we do have a decision to make here on whether or not we want to cast Heron of Hope, gain two life, and sort of chill, or if we want to apply some pressure, some big pressure here. Like, if we pacify the Sharpshooter, we get to get in for four, gain three, flip the Bystander. These are all things that are nice. Um, they're going to be able to train the Sharpshooter next turn if they want. See, the only strike against this plan is it's mana inefficient because we'd like to spend four mana this turn uh, given that uh, we have the option to do that. So we could attack with just the bystander 
see if they want to play around a combat trick and play Heron of Hope. Uh, we lose a we lose a single life gained that way. I don't like that they're coming back for a bunch of damage. We have so much life gain that it, this almost doesn't matter. Uh, well, we're out of time. Rope gets us again. Uh, we'll pass. So we should have gotten in for an attack there, but we were about to rope out. So um, made a slightly so slightly suboptimal play, I think, to not attack. But having this back as a blocker is, you know, not the worst. It's pretty bad, though, because we don't, we don't really want to block with it. Um, but uh, anyhow, actually probably should have tapped Minister as well. That rope, man, makes you sweat. It's not a fun thing. Okay, that's a great card. And, um, pretty unfortunate to, yeah, to see them have that. I guess, I mean, I guess they don't have great attacks, at least. Okay, so does this have training itself? It does. Okay. Um, so I think we certainly want to imprison the sharpshooter now because it can attack, get a counter, and draw them extra cards. Uh, whereas this cannot, unless they can pump one of their other creatures somehow. Uh, Brian Comer's on an option for us. Trainee's just not a very good card here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Obviously, this cadet can get out of hand in the future, but I, I think this is the move because it lets us gain a bunch of life and hit them for a bunch of damage and flip the panic bystander, which can then threaten to block a bunch of stuff. Boom. Not bad. Not bad. See what our opponent wants to uh, respond with here. That's a good one. It's a real good one. They can attack. We do have good blocks here. They're going to. They could have um, tricks, eh? So they've got two mana up. Pretty unfortunate. If they do. Gonna be pretty hard to race this paladin, isn't it? I think, oh man. Okay, so if we don't block here, if we don't block here, we're just racing. But this doesn't get it. This doesn't really improve for us at any point because we don't have removal. Uh, we could draw our own admin will, I guess. This feels like they don't make this attack if they don't have a trick. So how badly do we want to trade cackling culprit for a combat trick? Not very, because we've got lifelink in the air, so we're not dying. I th uh, yeah, I think we don't block here. As tempting as it is to try and kill that cadet, I think it's I think it's going to be too backbreaking to have our, our culprit die. Hopefully, we'll find. Uh... But this thing's super super good, because then it can this can start to uh, to give lifelink to things or gain lifelink itself or both. Because uh, it's going to, yeah, they get to swing it with both. Yeah. It's tough. It's a tough spot. Um, all right. Well, our options are fairly straightforward here. I think we're just playing trainee, giving Heron lifelink, and just gaining a lot of life this turn. Maybe chumping with the trainee next turn. Culprit's going to hang back. Don't think there's a reason to attack with culprit here. Oh, jeez. Hello. Okay. Well, that was their trick. So hopefully they don't have another one of those. Well, that's actually pretty good that this died. If we draw land, we get to suit up maybe our trainee with it. Wow. Okay, that was pretty freaky, though. Don't like that. In, in. Yeah. That's how it's going to be, eh? Can this, this give power? Dark creature with a plus one, plus one counter gains trample and life link to left turn. I mean, they played the trick. Do they have a second trick? We'd love to get this paladin off of the battlefield. And this cadet. 
Oh, the cadet is probably done growing. Paladin, man. They didn't attack with the two power creatures. So that could mean they have massive might. I was thinking about Adamant Will before, but now I'm thinking even if they do have a combat trick, we get to we get to trade with both because we do have Death Touch or do we? Oh no, we have to we have to pay for Death Touch. Oh shoot! I was just sitting here thinking this had Death Touch the whole time. How silly of me. Okay, so this is maybe a bad block or maybe just fine because they don't have anything. I was thinking this had Death Touch the whole time. Everybody watching this last turn is like, what the heck is this guy talking about? Why do we watch this channel? I don't know, guys. But I appreciate that you do. Okay. So we actually can't ever give this death touch in this deck because we don't have black mana. That's funny. But 3-5 body is still really good. Okay. Well, not much to do here except attack in the air, I guess. Yeah. Gain some life. Maybe we'll draw land someday. Uh, sending in Parish Blade Trainee. It can trade with something and die in a double block situation and then put its counter somewhere. It's not the worst. Putting the counter on the culprit would be good. Then it blocks the paladin. I okay, don't... Don't hate it. I don't hate it. Oh, I guess it's just one for ones with the, the spore crawler too. Yeah, that's fine. Don't love them drawing a card, but oh, I'm an idiot. Said I was gonna put it on the c culprit, put it on the heron instead. I mean, the heron's good too because it has lifelink. Um, what am I doing this game? It's so weird. Such a weird, um, such weird gameplay decisions here for me. Uh, yeah, I mean, Heron with Lifelink is nice though. Okay, Griff Rider, Don Hart, Rural Recruit. Oh my goodness. Okay, well we just need to find lands so that we can cast our spells. That would be good. I don't think we have attacks this turn. Opponent has attacks if they want them. Ah. Twin Blade Geist. Okay. Yeah, so. Don't think we attack because they get to attack us back with the Griff Rider. And this is a human, right? So then they get to draw another card. So yeah, I don't think we can. I think we gotta sit back here. Um, but we could. Gain four off of our ministers. So I think we should do that. That's pretty good. And we'll say go. So Twin Blade Geist can currently eat uh, the 3 1 and the Royal Recruit if it's not training, but most likely would be if it's stacking. Heron can hopefully eat the Griff Rider. We're very behind, though. This is not going to. It does not look like it's going to end well for us. I don't think I made any, like, horrendous mistakes. I just don't think we drew uh, drew lands, obviously. obviously uh, didn't draw lands. And we're not dead. I mean, we've still got... If we do hit an island, we've all of a sudden we've got some stuff going on. Uh, we've got a lot of life gain to weather the storm here. And then, I mean, maybe the Hullbreaker... Uh, sorry, artifact. Okay, that doesn't work. Uh, maybe the Hullbreaker comes down and... Uh, and does some work for us. Opponent's attacks are decent here. Uh, not great, though. Yeah, they're going to pass it back. And we are going to find a planes. That's quite nice. So now... Now do we have good stuff going on. We've got a double strike lifelink um, if we want it. It's a spirit. Uh, so that would be a 3-3... Three, three, Double strike lifelink flying. 3-3. Three, three. It's pretty good. Or we just play the Heron. Blessed Geist. Has another body. 
I mean, their attacks weren't good last turn. Um, part in part because of Twin Blade Geist. Does this give vigilance or anything? No. Um, vigilance would be good. Why don't Why don't you just give that? Kind of want to pressure their life total a little bit. We could do that with the Heron. We could do that with the Heron. Um, so I think we play this Heron thing. And pump our Heron. And swing for five. We won't gain five, but we're already gaining four. And I mean, at least put put our opponent under some kind of clock here, because like they, you know, they have a lot of, yeah, okay. So that's a move. We're at thirty-seven, so I think we're gonna survive. But that's a move. Okay, untap, draw a card. Oh yeah, Griff Rider trains. Right. Okay. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Um, sure. Here, here. Here. Take a bunch. Is there a world where we don't block the Griff Rider? I don't think so. Okay, maybe attacking with Heron was a little aggressive. They're going to gain a bunch. We do want this trade, though. Um, massive Might. Nice. Nice draw. Okay. Uh, so that's cool. They're going to give stuff lifelink. Okay, we're not losing anything of true significance. a sharpshooter for the opponent. Hey. Little land action never hurt anybody. Okay. Where are we at here? Kind of in the same spot. So we get Heron plus Geist, get two one ones, hold up syncopate, or we could get the brine comer action going. Um we can also get Katilda going on Twin Blade Geist, which gives us uh, still a 3-3 three, three, uh, three, three Devil Striker, which doesn't block all that well. It spends our mana very well, though. Five, six mana we have. Hmm. And then, I mean, if we play Brinecomber this turn, that sets up Katilda to be quite powerful next turn. So does Heron Blessed Geist, though. And that would allow us to hold up Syncopate. Does that matter? Kind of. They've got seven mana, so Syncopate for one is not likely to do a whole lot. Um, don't think we're attacking, though. They're at 18. <laughs> so what are we going to do here? Maybe we just get Katilda down. If we draw a land next turn, we can kind of semi-double spell. Maybe we just do that then. Oh, 4-4. Four, four. Okay. I mean, maybe we do want to get in. This is 12 in the air. And we're going to gain 16 or something. Yeah, that's a that's that's a significant amount of life. Or fourteen. So that's like that's an alpha strike's worth of life there. And then, I mean, if they train the sharpshooter and we get to go Geist, 
Brian Comer. They could just be dead. This is a wacky, wacky little game here. Griff Rider this is annoying. I think we just have to take it. <clears throat> Good attacks. Don't want to lose the Heron. I don't think. They're going to gain eight. Up to 14. We, we could potentially... Uh, well, the Sharpshooter's untapped, so... That won't quite work like that, but... I think this is the move. Oh, they're going to gain 12. Sorry. Yep. Very well. Right back to where they were. So maybe the, the, the attack not make any sense? I mean, we, we're at a higher life total now, so... I did something. It's nighttime. This thing is bigger. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, well, it was good last turn. I think it's still good this turn. Um, so we exile... This, play Minister and swing for a million. Or uh, we play Comer, Minister, which ends up with the same power and toughness on Twin Blade guys and lets us hold up Syncopate. But again, they have so much mana that I don't think Syncopate matters at this point in the game. At, at least at X equals one. So we might as well spend... As much as we can here. And opponent is holding priority on something. <clears throat> Man, we do not want to run into a fierce retribution. Or twin blade guys. I mean, they could just untap and cast it anyways, I guess. So, so maybe that's... Uh, yeah, I guess that's not really a real concern. I mean, it's a concern, but it's not something we need to play around. <clears throat> I guess we can play around it, actually, by holding up Syncopate right here. Although that's, that thing taps for two. So, if, depending on how they tap. You get rocked by it. They're taking the damage. Down to two. We're at 52. <laughs> cool. All right. Traveling Minister in play. Passing it back. Opponent's got a steady stream of card advantage off of this cloaked cadet. It's not going to stop here. This is a wacky, swingy, weird game. It's pretty fun, though. <clears throat> Alpha. Yeah. I respect it. Okay, Sharpshooter's going to stay back. Wolf's staying back. Okay, reconsidering here. In. Jam. Why wouldn't you? Okay, draw an extra card. And we got some decisions to make here. Okay. We'd like to block the recruit. We'd like to block the rallier. Uh, them killing Heron with a trick. Not great for us, but we are also getting to the point where I might be okay. There are two, but they're going to be at a way higher than that. Got some little 1-1 one -one dudes hanging around. I think we'll leave those on the battlefield as they are helping our Twin Blade guys. I think we block like this. We may lose our Heron here, which is not good for us, but we still have the best creature on the battlefield. For now, looks like it might be dying. 
No. No. Wolf strike. Nasty. Okay. Well, maybe our heron's gonna live. No, our heron's also gonna die. Oh boy. Okay, well now, now we're pretty scared. So Cloak Cadet here did the did the uh, lion share the work for our opponent. I mean, they also have some other good creatures in their deck, but that all the cards they drew, man, just made it really difficult for us to uh, <clears throat> compete. So I feel we did have an uh, an instance or two where we could have maybe killed the cadet, and we did not. Um, and you know, that's the way it goes. Um, but we would have had to have made like pretty sketchy double blocks that could have gotten us blown out by tricks that they clearly had and ended up happening. So I, I don't really regret anything, but it's worth noting that this card is sick. Uh, so Twin Blade Geist on something, probably. Probably on the culprits. So we maybe get flying later. Can make a 4 1 spirit token and swing. Don't hate that either. I think we'll do just that. And then that, that either trades with sharpshooter or hits them for four. Makes use of our actual minister activations rather than just strictly gaining life. Not that it matters. Our opponent's got a lot of life gain coming their way as well. But uh, hopefully this will make things a little bit more awkward for them. Since now this can tangle with the cloaked cadet and actually kill it. They're due to draw a couple lands at some point. They've only, they've only drawn eight. Look at all this gas. Look at all that gasoline right there. Okay, the opponent did, in fact, draw land. That's nice. <laughs> and what's coming in? All kinds of stuff. Oh, dear. So they get to draw right off the bat. I mean... We could just block the sharpshooter. That protects us against plus two. Doesn't protect us against plus three. We have life. What am I? Is there, are they going to deck soon? They're at 15. Not really. We're at 42. We can take damage. Um, again, don't feel like they'd make this attack if they didn't have a trick. So I think this is the block. And we take 12 down to 30. They gain a bunch. Maybe I'm playing too cautiously. I just want to know that they don't have a trick here before we um, risk our most valuable creature in combat, right? All right, uh, culprit. Still chilling. Uh, so I think we just play Brinecomber here. Hallbreaker Horror, you know, could be good. And I guess we do get to attack them for four in the air. Should we have attacked with Lantern, or blocked with Lantern Bearer so that we could give uh, plus one and flying to Culprit? Probably. Man, just give me an island, though. Give an island. We also have a Sigarda's Imprisonment activation if we end up with nothing to do next turn somehow. We're not doing too badly. I don't know. We might not die. Really weird game. Your opponent's going to jam here. No fear. So they want to gain life. 
again, really don't want to lose this culprit. Uh, and if they have plus two, we would at least trade with the werewolf. If they have plus two. If they have plus three, we just lose it. Uh, if we make it a creature with flying, plus one, plus one, next turn, that's four. Plus still doesn't beat plus two, uh, plus three. So I guess we try to trade with the Paladin here. I think we try to trade with the Paladin. Lantern Bearer. Lantern Bearer could just jump, jump in front of whatever, I think. Because we're going to want it in the graveyard for our horror. Okay, here comes maybe a trick, maybe not. Lifelink. Trick. Yeah, plus three. So there, we're never beating that with this creature, no matter what. Fortunately, we cannot give it death touch. That would have been nice. Gain a couple life, though. That's okay. Man, tricks are good when you got good creatures, let me tell you. Traveling mini. Lantern Bearer on Brinecomber gives us um, another 1-1. One, one. We really need to find some land, uh, some blue land, specifically. Because <clears throat> now <laughs> we don't have any good blockers. Uh, so we could get another 1-1 one, one flyer, which is cool. That, that saves us some time. Uh, we could exile Sigardus thing, get a blood, cycle syncopate, look for a land. Kind of like that move. Since I think Hallbreaker Horror is how we're truly going to win this game. So let's go for that. And I guess it doesn't matter what we tap. Syncopate has not been good this game. For reasons that we have discussed. Once you're behind, it's really bad. Later in the game, it's not great. So it really just needs a specific scenario where you're ahead and it's mid-game and your opponent's strained on mana. Yeah. Yeah. Get in there. Okay. Now we have a chance, I think. Don't th think we want to attack here. Not sure how many of these we want to actually block with, though. So it might be, might be like, quote-unquote, free to just attack. Comer can go in the graveyard for sure. Um, but if we don't have three flyers back, then they get to attack with Griff Rider, so... I don't think we're going to do it. We're not going to do it. We don't want to give them... We don't want to give them anything for free here. 13 to 18. What an epic game. Better, there better be two lands in their hand right now. They have drawn all that gas. Okay, in with a bunch of stuff. Uh, so we put, we put four things in front of the werewolf. We want Brinecomer to die because we want uh, we want to have we want to have things in our graveyard uh, to cast for Hullbreaker Horror. But again, like a combat trick just kind of ruins us. Uh, they can also just decide to only kill the spirits and not kill the Brian Comer, which is bad. I think I'm on just double blocking the 2-2 two -two here. Taking 7. I think that's okay. Yeah, gain life. All right, so now we have enough mana to Hullbreaker plus bounce something. Um, so the question is, is it better to do that 
or try to ambush their werewolf in combat. I'm still playing around Witch's Web because I think it's a, there's a good chance they still have it. Um, like, ambushing their werewolf, I guess it, it's good if they have Sigarda's imprisonment. Um, which is something they could realistically have. Because if we play this and bounce Cadet or Griff, I guess it would be Griff, um, and they turn around and go to prison, and that's kind of annoying. It's like a bit riskier to do it on their turn inside of combat. There's no reason to believe that they don't have tricks in hand. Oh. Okay, well we're definitely gaining life, so let's start there while we're as we're roping out here. Like best case scenario, we just play it, bounce Griff Rider, and they don't have tricks, so they just don't have any attacks. And they, I mean, at that point, we're just crushing them. So we're gonna get to double spell next turn, bounce all their stuff, and start to give this flying and just do a bunch of stuff. So like. I think if they don't have a trick, we're going to crush them either way. If they do have imprisonment, we need to... lose as little value, I think, as possible there. So I guess that means we want to trade with the werewolf. It means we're going to take more damage, though, because they're going to get... they get to attack us with everything. Oh, boy. Um, so that's something to consider. T taking 12 here puts us to 16, which is a fine life total. Uh, it's slightly managed, inefficient. I think, I think we, I think we're going to go for the, the, the play in combat. I guess they could also have fierce retribution, which wrecks us either way. So the plan is to block the werewolf. If they don't send it, and they're like mind reading that we have horror, that's like a reasonable thing to think. If your opponent passes with eight mana, and like we, we have disturbed stuff we could have played, like we're kind of telegraphing it, um, then we know they have a trick, and we don't we don't block. Uh, we know they have witch's web specifically. I guess they could also have valorous stance. I think they already played that though. Not that they can't have two, but okay, send with all. No fear. In. No fear. Okay. Come on. Come on, Hullbreaker. Wow. Opponent's like, see you later. Don't even want to deal with that. What an epic game. All right. Well, Hullbreaker is still on the team. See you for the next. We're back. Opponent goes first. Uh, this hand. This hand. Feels like a bit of a trap. <clears throat> we do have both colors of mana, which is important in a limited hand. We've got a card we can cast on two in the form of Syncopate. We've got a cast we can turn a, a card we can cast on turn three in the form of Sigarda's Imprisonment. So, in theory, we can answer their three drop with this and their four drop with this while getting beaten down by their two drop. And then... Resolve a Heron of Hope, and maybe one day resolve a Hallbreaker Horror. <clears throat> I don't like it. I'd rather have a creature. Um, but I think it's I think it's right on the line. And, uh, well, there you go. Sometimes you get what you ask for. So now we're most certainly playing Panic Bystander on two, rather than holding up Syncopate, because we want to get the beats going. As we've said numerous times in this uh, video... Counterspells are best to use to protect your lead rather than to sort of stay at parity or, uh, worst of all, if you're behind, uh, to, you know, continue to still be behind but not by more. <laughs> so th those are all, uh, those are the ways that counterspells sort of work out. So you want to defend your lead with your counterspells. That's the way you want to play them. Um, and... We're going to do just that here. Obviously, we, we, we again, would have preferred to play a creature uh, that turn, but we didn't have one, so perfect opportunity here 
to snag our opponent's four drop, and uh, now we're pushing damage. So this hand, without Panic Bystander uh, coming to us kind of luckily, would have been a, a lot worse, I think. Uh, fortunately for us, our opponent didn't play anything in the first few turns, but the fact that we actually have a board presence here, we got to snag their four, and we're continuing to beat them down. Now they're on the back foot. They have to answer this Heron. Um, you know, we, we're we applying some pressure, whereas if we didn't have this, uh, they don't necessarily play last rate flesh there. Maybe they play something bigger. So they, they feel like they can. So the point I'm trying to make here is uh, two drops are the best, and I'm glad we drew one. Unfortunately, we don't have anything to play this turn, so that's uh, stinky. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What you're going to do is hope to draw a island, I guess. Uh, <laughs> still puts us two turns away from casting this. But yeah, island would be, would be a good draw. And any uh, any other any spell we can cast would be a good draw. Worst draw would be planes. Hey, love to see it. Opponent on five mana. Looks like they're playing some kind of controlling blue-red spells deck. So we can expect counter spells from them, and we would not like to walk into those with Hullbreaker Horror. Fortunately, this has Flash, and it can't be countered, so that actually doesn't matter at all. Uh, we're going to pass the turn back. Still would like to EOT this because, um, you know, then we get to attack with it. They don't get a turn to figure out if they can remove it. Maybe they'll tap out for something. They may be playing around counter magic of ours, which we don't have. Stitched Assistant is going to stick. And it is not going to exploit, more than likely. Yep. All right. We'll take our turn. I uh, don't see a reason to not just play Horror on their end step. I don't think we want to ambush, because they could very easily have another Last Ray Flesh, although that wouldn't kill it. They'd need to have Rending Flame. It's within the realm of possibility, though. It's better to not allow for that. Uh, we really don't want this thing to die, but we have, we will pass. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be really funny if they have horror as well. Ballista Watcher. Okay. Well, now we're less worried about certain spells, so we can we can actually make the block here. I think uh, we're worried about what like them being able to disperse this. They could do that anyways. Don't think there's anything that deals four or gives four power. There's sure strike. Yeah, so I think we're safe to do this. Uh, maybe they didn't play a land yet. Uh, did they play a land? Uh, did they play a land? They could go land, rending flame. I don't remember if they played a land. We're at seven... They're at six. I feel like they did not. I think we just take the damage. Because, um, like, if this lives, we're wrecking them either way. You know, like, we don't need to... Uh, we're not going to need to eat the Stitch Assistant to get value here. Like, this this is going to be absurd. We're just going to bounce both their things. Like, even if the chance is very slim that they do have Rending, uh, Rending Flame land, like, I don't know what the percentage is, probably, like, two or something. But, like, I still think it's worth playing around. We could bounce their Blood Token here, but uh, it's kind of kind of bad value for us I think so let it let it ride see what they got here seventh land if they play rending flame here vampire's vengeance that's real good uh so we can save something what's it gonna be is it gonna be traveling minister or just panic bystander we gain two uh, we should save the trainee and train it next turn. Being of your end step, so yeah, we're probably not going to be getting that happening. So I think we save the trainee. This, I believe, is worth it because we get to bounce their blood token as well. I guess... Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, no, we don't want to bounce their vampire's vengeance. 
That's not good. Because they just recast it. So they can blood and response here, I guess. This isn't that good, but... And looks like they will do that. But I think saving the trainee is still worthwhile because it's, it's going to be a meaningful creature on the board here. Gain two. And they can blood again or cast Stitch Scab or Stitched uh, Assistant, rather. And we'll see what else they've got. Yep. Exploit. Probably not. Well, I mean, Sigarda's Imprisonment to bounce it is kind of awful. Uh, trainee becomes... So if we, if we do imprison it, we could bounce their blood token. Again, that's kind of decent. And put them to one. Which is cool. It's not zero. Uh, we have five. We have eight mana, so we could actually also exile the Stitched Assistant and get a blood token of our own for a future turn. I think this is just good enough that we should do it. And I think we play the land here. Because five mana is a lot. Like to untap and do that and then just have the land in hand to cycle I don't think is good enough. Red, blue doesn't gain life all that well. Return to our creature's owner's hand, draw a card. Okay. Blista Watcher. Okay. So, yeah, that's good. Um, let's exile this. Angelic Quartermaster. So this will have to trade... Each of two other target creatures. So we force the trade, or, and we have a 3 3 flyer, or we just replay the Hall Breaker. I feel like all roads kind of lead to the same place. Can't be countered. I mean, I think it's slightly better to do this. They have to trade. We have a giant flyer. It, you know, the less stuff they have on board, I think the better for us. I, I'm not sure any of this really matters, but... I think about stuff that doesn't matter all the time, so... It's okay. Alright, we got there. Hallbreaker Horror. I'm sorry I talked smack. Sometimes you gotta do that, though. Sometimes you gotta talk a little smack about a card so that it shows up for you. We'll see you for the next. We're back, and we go first... Love to see it. Unfortunately, we cannot cast any of the spells in our hand, so we will have to mulligan this hand. Yeesh. And another kind of weak one here. Uh, mulliganing on the play is so hurtful. Um, don't really want to go to five, but I think we might have to. All we've got is a traveling minister, and then we need to just rip land after land in order to do anything, and uh, one of them needs to be blue. <laughs> Uh, so I think we do have to ship it, unfortunately. Uh, this is going to be a difficult game to win. We're going to be uh, on the back foot. Uh, or at least uh, we're going to be um, disadvantaged in terms of, of cards. Um, so this hand, obviously, we're going to keep. The question to me is, are we going to put two lands back or are we going to put a land and a spell back? Because uh, obviously we, we you know need to hit three lands to cast our spells. Uh, I think... I think we put the land back. I mean, distracting Geist going to the yard, you know, is going to mean we're going to want to hit five at some point. So maybe that's a reason to keep a land uh, and put Imprisonment back. Of course, Imprisonment is a great card as well. Uh, so it's it's kind of tough any way you slice it. Um, our deck can operate fairly fairly well off of three lands. We've got two looks to find one. Two are at the bottom of our deck, though. Um, so that makes that more difficult. I think I'm going to keep a land. Uh, just If we were on the draw, I would 100% put a, another land back. But, like, the, the, the scenarios where we come out winning this game, 
involve us hitting our land drops and casting spells. So um, I think it's correct to uh, to do it this way, but it's 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 close. And obviously, you never know what's going to come off the top. So uh, you can look like a fool, or you can look like a genius. So far, we're looking pretty good because we're going to get to get to cast our distracted geist on turn three. Um, no matter what happens here, but if we rip a couple too many lands, we're going to feel, uh, feel bad, but heart of the cards, you know, so far that's not what's happening to us. Uh, so let's pump up a minister, getting used to the way this works with them flipping around when you're trying to do their thing. Get in for two here. Love it. And uh, play Distracting Geist. There could be a uh, uh, deal three, gain three on the other side there. That's okay if there is. Nothing we can do about that. Parasitic Grasp is the name of the card. And I think they're trying to cast it on our Geist, but they can't because it's not a human. Or I'm speculating way too deeply here. No, I was right. Look at that. Okay. So, there you go. A little soul read action there. Okay, so yeah, I mean, this is going about as well as it could go, given we mulligan to five. We're casting our spells and playing a game of magic here, and uh, that's all well and good. Distracting Geist is going to hopefully help enable a trainee attack in the future. Right now, it's just going to tap down their Weaver. We really want to avoid trading one of our cards for one of theirs, if we can. Uh, because we're naturally down so many cards. Uh, so we're going to need to generate some value either by getting a two for one or by, you know, getting a good flyer into play that can just sort of repeatedly deal damage. And that is just not at all what we want to see. Whenever this attacks, search for a basic land and then start making bugs. Yeah, that's, that's real good. So, uh, I think getting trainee up and running is part of the solution here. Uh, I don't I don't think we're beating this card. But uh, I think if we're going to beat this card, we have to uh, get in there. So as much as I said we don't want a one-for-one, one, uh, it doesn't really feel like we have much, much of a choice here. But pretty soon, all our creatures are going to be invalidated. So we'll tap the 3-5 down. They can trade if they want. And uh, they may not want. They may want to uh, utilize their Weaver to make mana. In which case we get in for a cool five damage and feel pretty good about ourselves. Either way, uh, not looking good. Okay, opponent's going to make the trade. And we have a land play this turn, so we will do that. And I guess put the Geist on the trainee. And now we got ourselves a little territorial hammer skull action. But, uh, yeah, I mean, even if our opponent has five lands in hand, I still don't think we can beat them. Because <laughs> this thing is going to start making dudes, and uh, we're, we're in big trouble. Big trouble. Uh, I guess we could go land, I guess, you know, island, another land, and then uh, our rare would maybe get us back in this, but tough to imagine. And the lands come in untapped. Oh, man, I forgot about that. That's gross. Okay, so their lands are five fives or four fours? Five fives. Well, that's good, isn't it? Good for them. Okay, we'll pump our guy up. Try to attack them for damage. Maybe that's how we can win this. I prefer to lose to bomb rares when we've mulled to five because it doesn't make me feel as bad, you know? We, we were already heavily disadvantaged to begin with and then knowing that the opponent had this on turn four, um, it's okay. It's all right. Okay, so high part shaman going to come in. Opponent's going to protect their life total by leaving the five five back, which I totally respect. It's pretty much the only way they lose this game is by getting a little too frisky and... Uh, Letting us uh, get them for too much damage, incidentally, here. 
And this is instant speed? No, sorcery speed. So they got to commit to the bug this turn if they want. It's a 6-6 six, six bug, though. Pretty nasty. But I'm going for scattered thoughts rather than making another bug. I feel if I were them, I would make another bug because you never know how long this is going to last for, even though we don't you know, have particularly good uh, attacks or anything. Oh yeah, that's about the worst card we could draw in this situation. Uh, so now we don't have attacks. Uh, we'll just gain some life. And maybe we'll get to sync bait something sweet, but uh, even if we do, it's not going to matter. Opponent goes for mulch. I think we'll let that one resolve. Draw three. Man. Almost ancestral. Green ancestral recall there. So, I mean, we're buying a little bit of time with the life gain we have. If we had the uh, Wrath in our deck, we could obviously get out of it that way. Uh, however, I, we don't. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure how we're going to make this happen, but we'll keep playing. We'll play it out. Four, five, six. So we still need to draw, like, Island plus Hullbreaker Horror. Is there, is there time for that? I mean, we're taking 11 this turn. So, not likely. Down to 6. Uh, yeah, we'll take it. Make a bug. All right, there's the horror. I don't think it matters, though, because we, we're not going to be able to live uh, long enough. If we have to pass. We can't even gain life. Opponent plays a land. Makes a bug. Can make two bugs a turn now? No. Just about, though. Yeesh. In. Oh, yeah, now they can make another bug. Oh, they don't, oh, they don't have any lands to get? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Or they just... That's weird. Uh, okay. So this can live if we do that. And these can die. And that's still us dead. Oh, so they're just not searching because it doesn't matter. Uh, so we go to... Yeah, we're dead. Okay, cool. On to the next. Welcome back. We are going second. And we can't cast any of our spells. And we have... Why do we keep seeing this in our opening hand? Because uh, we put it in our deck and we deserve to. That's why. Okay. Uh, so we can't cast any of our spells. So we mulligan that one. This hand is quite good. We're going to keep it and put the Heron Blessed Geist back. Five men is a lot. We've got a lot of stuff to do before we get to that point. And hitting a blue source is always nice. It's a little bit awkward here in that we can't play an Equip Ceremonial Knife next turn, but maybe we'll draw a two-drop. No, we will not. Uh, I think we do want to get in for a damage while we can. We, since we are a, a, uh, an aggressive deck at heart. Catilda next turn, if we want it. Alluring Suitor, that's a card. That's a big card. Um, it's a huge card. So we could... Imprison that right now. Do we need to have a hasty threat to make this happen? And uh, that's not horribly likely, but uh, also, you know, could happen. I'm going to say 70% they don't have it. So I think we're going to go with Katilda to try and get the life gain train underway. Uh, this is two, two to equip, so it's still awkward, but, um, let's see what they do here. I'm just gonna kill our Catilda. Ooh, and exile. Nasty. Just absolutely filthy. Okay. Recluse is annoying, but they don't have a blood token yet. So, I think here we just go imprisonment on the suitor and play minister and pass the turn. So... 
love our spot, but... You know, we can make the game go long with these ministers. If our opponent's plan is to attack us. Actually, attacking them may have been correct there. Pretty unlikely they block. Uh, so it's a question of how badly do we want to make the game go long versus, versus not. And I, I would say we do want the game to go long uh, because... We're pretty far behind, and we know that we just have a land in hand. They have three cards in hand. Okay, so Edgar, when it dies, return it transforms. So if they have a way to sack it, uh, then we, we're not going to get to get rid of it. But otherwise, we can get rid of it next turn, courtesy of uh, Sigarda's Imprisonment. So I think what we want to do is imprison, equip knife, and attack for two. And I mean, yeah, if they've got a way to, uh, if they've got a way to sack it, then we're probably going to lose this game. If they don't, then we have a chance to win. I think it's worth trading with the recluse here to get a blood token, if that's what they want to do. Uh, and we get a blood token either way, so that's nice. And then, um... Yeah, I mean, next turn we're, we're going to really prioritize exiling this thing because it's fa fairly, um, fairly likely they've got like a Mind Leech Ghoul or uh, the other thing, the Gargantua on their deck. So we really want to make sure that this Edgar's gone. Yeah, and they've got ways to recur their threats and all that stuff. All right, so this is really good. Wow, and <laughs> they even get the mana off of this even though it's... Uh, that's so good. Okay, so we're taking seven. Um, they're flipping. Minister for us. Okay. So that was a good, real good turn for them. Real good turn for them. Um, they can still activate this, but they don't have double red. Okay, so I think, I think we just get rid of this thing. I mean, we could play Traveling Minister. Uh, I don't know how much that's actually helping us. Now, on defense, we've got a double block on the Witch. Or we've got a double block on the Sanguine Statuette. On offense, uh, we can make a Blood Token, of which we have two. So we don't, we're not in, in dire need of, the, of those. Um, if we don't... Sit back to block. We could go to we gain up to sixteen. Take six down to, to uh, six down to uh, ten. Don't love that. We could go we go up to fifteen. Deal them three. Get a blood token. Go down to nine. I guess that's the play. Because uh, I don't know how we're winning this game without our ministers. So doing a double block isn't great. Oh, we're taking extra damage from the witch too. That's worth noting. So, yeah, Mulligan hurt us here. They have the right answer for our Katilda. We're, we're, in, we're in tight here, but, um, you know, something like uh, Heron of Hope would be okay here. I think we have a Kindly Ancestor in the deck. That would be, that would be fine as well. Pretty much any way that we can uh, make this game go longer. Heron would be excellent, actually, because we've got... Um, all this life game with these ministers. Okay, so we're our, our deck's gonna give us lands. That's okay. We've got blood to get rid of those. Even though we kind of do want lands in case we draw the the, uh, the kraken, but it's one card in our deck. There we go, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Um, now they might just snap off some removal on this. So we'll activate this minister first. Okay, they're gonna let that go. So, uh, so now it's like kind of an interesting spot. Like, do we start attacking them? Probably not. We're definitely losing the race. Well, they don't have any more blood tokens actually, so we're not entirely losing the race here. Um, don't know what they have in hand. I think I'm okay getting in actually. Nothing to get back. <clears throat> so 
So, yeah, I mean, if, they're, if their hand's a couple of blanks, we're in good shape. If their hand is impactful cards and removal, then we're in tough. They're going to steal our minister. They don't have a sack effect, I don't think. They get to make a blood, though. Uh, we could block it, and that's not good for us, so... I guess we're taking all this damage down to four. Okay, they get their blood. Pretty good for them. Land. Well, I'm going to send it back. Don't need it. Need life. Parish Blade Trainee. That's kind of life. Because it blocks. Uh, so do we want to hold up Lifelink on the Heron. We're so constrained on mana here. Uh, opponent's going to attack us for nine. We would like to kill one of their creatures. We would like for our Heron to live. Uh, I don't know if that's possible. We'd have to double block Minister and Trainee. Oh, they're attacking for 10 because of the Odious Witch. So Trainee and Minister could double up on something. And we'd have to chump something else. So I'm not really sure where that leaves us. Because we also want to... I guess we're not chumping with Heron. If we, gain, if we just tap both of our things, gain four. We go to eight. If we can just keep our ministers alive, like we can start getting six a turn. Um, geez, it's close, right? Like, And then, like, getting to attack with this in the air. Actually, maybe that was the plan. Maybe that was the play over... I wasn't thinking about attacking the, the Heron, but we could have. We could we could still. Uh, it makes us... Uh, they've got Dancer, too, to pump things. It's, uh, it's probably not correct. Um, but if we'd held the two mana up, we could have um, gained another f four or five in the air. So maybe that was the move. Maybe I messed up there. Okay, so we're at eight. We've got lots of stuff going on here. Uh, even if we kill their creatures, it's not even that good for us. In. Drain. All right, so we're definitely chumping. Uh, yeah, we got to chump with two things because they've got... Um, They have got the pump on Deadly Dancer. Hmm. Suppose we chump Minister then. Heron, with Heron double blocking on Statuette gets rid of it, but they don't have any more blood. I think they'll probably make some more at some point, but like, I don't see how we're winning this game without our Heron. So I'm going to chump like this. Take four down to three. Uh, but yeah, I think our run is coming to an end here. I'm not really seeing it. Maybe last turn we did need to... Uh, oh, did we get a counter? No, no, of course not. Because uh, uh, it didn't train. That would have been sweet. Okay, that's, yeah, that's going to end our run, I think, because the Harvester gets to just kill Heron for free. Um, distracting Geist does block, but not very well. So gain 2, 4, then 4 plus 1. So we gain 9 up to 13. Uh, and play Distracting Geist, I guess. That's our best mode of, of action here, but, I mean, they just go... Well, then now they got another blood for statuette, so then they actually just kill us. Yeah. And uh, well, not necessarily. Because uh, we have guys to block, so they could blood tithe it away and hit us for 10.
Uh, yeah, I guess, I don't know. I guess we'll try it. I'm not, I'm not seeing a way out of this, unfortunately. So, Mull you know, mulligans hurt us in this. We, I think all the games we lost were uh, mulligan-related. Which is kind of ironic because I said that uh, draft a low curve, you'll mulligan less frequently, but that wasn't the case for us, unfortunately. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I mi maybe missed an attack with this Heron a couple turns ago. Maybe that was the move. Uh, okay, opponent's going to blood. They probably have, like... A braid or something too, right? To uh, to get the job done here. So, okay. Well, we're alive. We're alive. Uh, they can get things back. I mean, we might as well just do this. Maybe they have sure strike or something. No. All right, we're three. Land. Celebrate. Oh my God. Yep. Land for us won't go. Let's pitch it. Maybe we did. Maybe if I did, made that heron attack, maybe we would have a chance here. Brian Comer, that blocks. So if we play that, we have two one ones to chump chump. They have blood. Uh, we're gonna gain four. We're gonna gain nine again, up to. We gain nine again up to 12. We're going to hit them for four down to six. We have two one ones that can block here, block here. Take seven. We go to five. Uh, eight because of this. Nine because of this. We go to um, we go to three again. So it's a wash. Right? Gain two, gain two, gain four plus one. And they don't have any cards in hand. So, yeah, I mean, that's the only play we have access to. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. No, this isn't going to work because we can't uh, give lifelink and cast this. Ah, uh, crap. Um, and we have no timeouts for some reason. Cool. Uh, all right, well, we're playing this for sure. And uh, we might be in a spot where we just have to block here, I guess. Crap. There's one man short of being able to do this. Just... Felt like we're just on the edge of being able to to do what we want to do this game. So our opponent just had slight upper hand on us the whole time. And we're down a card, so there's your edge, I think. Your opponent's going to cycle their blood token, discarding a land. Very nice. Very nice. And swing in. We're at four. Uh, so we're dead on board. We have to block with, we have to chop everything they have here. And that's gross. Oh yeah. We can't even block because they've got the celebrant has menace. Yeah. So, um, still thinking about that Heron of hope attack where we cast a minister instead. That could have been the difference. Um, but anyhow. That's the way it went down. Thanks so much for watching. I thought this deck was pretty decent. A um, couple of losses that I feel were pretty unavoidable. That last game was pretty close. I think maybe that maybe uh, could have played it a little bit better there. Um, but uh, yeah, four and three, respectable record. Uh, if you have any questions or any comments, please do leave them in the comments. Please click like if you enjoy the video that I make here and uh, subscribe as well uh, to support the channel. We're we're sort of crawling up the subscriber count. I'm really, really thankful to everybody who has been clicking subscribe. So please consider doing that if you're enjoying what we're doing here. Uh, until next time. Bye.